Hello and welcome to another video. This is Dawn. In today's video, we are going to be doing some loose expressive painting, some watercoloring to be more precise. In the last video, we did more detailed watercoloring. And in this one, we're gonna focus on a little looser technique. Now we're still gonna use our stamps as a guide. And today I'm gonna to be using the Flora and Fauna 3. This is a gorgeous image with large floral clusters. I'm gonna be using the Cosmo uh, arrangement up here. I'm also gonna be working on the Prima watercolor paper today. This is a great crafting quality watercolor pad and it is gummed on the top and the bottom. Separating the sheets, it's really easy. You'll just need a palette knife or even a butter knife would work and you're gonna slide it up through the free edge and then you're going to slide through that gummed area to release the paper from the pad. Now, if you want to, you can release sheet by sheet, tape it down to your preferred surface and do your watercoloring, but I'm just gonna work directly on the pad. That's just how I prefer to do it. This is gonna leave me plenty of room to um, decide later how I want to orient my uh, image, and it allows me to turn the pad as I paint. I'm gonna be using Distress Ink and Antique Linen and my Fisker's uh, Stamp Press. I'm gonna ink this up and I'm not, I'm not super worried about it making a perfect impression. So I'm just going to use this as my guide. And I want as much of the image to disappear as possible. So I'm gonna stamp this down. Again, if it doesn't stamp perfect, it's not the end of the world. And I am stamping a little bit darker than I prefer for video purposes, just so you guys can see that. And you can see here, I actually got a really good impression but again, it's not important here. I'm just using it for the composition. I'm using a number 12 uh, round brush here. This is the Princeton Heritage 4050 series. It's uh, got a nice fat belly and comes to a really, really fine point. And I love this brush. I can't recommend it enough. So I'm gonna use some permanent rose and um, a yellow. <laughs> I don't remember offhand exactly which yellow I used, but I'm using the Mungyo palette today. Again, this is another one of my favorites for crafting. And I'm going to start the same way I would start my freehand watercolor. I'm, I like to start in the center when I do florals most of the time. And I've laid down a little bit of that yellow and you'll notice that I did not worry about filling in the entire center. And now I'm loaded up that brush with that uh, permanent rose and I am just creating petal shapes here. I am not following the stamp religiously. I'm using it again as a general guide for the shape and the direction of the petals. So I'm going to continue to work my way around Sometimes I'm dipping my brush into the water to take off some of the pigment. And then other times I am dipping more heavily into the pigment there on my palette. Now what this is gonna do is it's going to create those beautiful, uh, that beautiful range of color where I've got some really light watery pink and then I've got some really deep rose. I'm making sure not to solidly fill in every petal because I want to leave those white breaks. This is meant to be a little bit more expressive, a little more loose. And you can see here, I'm coming in with a little heavier pigment and just kind of dotting it and, and adding just a little bit of extra pigment here and there. And because the flower is still wet, that pigment's going to move and blend beautifully. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to intentionally cause some lost edges here. I'm taking a wet brush and I am touching the edge of some of those wet areas and pulling that pigment out and allowing that color to bleed out into the water that I've laid outside of the image. You can see here how that color just bursts into that water. And I can do this and um, feel comfortable and confident that the pigment's not going to go all over the place because it will only go where the paper is wet. 
So that little bit of water that I laid down outside of the image, it won't go past that. I've picked up a little burnt sienna and I'm just tapping that into the center there. It's still wet, so it's going to again blend nicely into that golden yellow that I first laid down. And now I'm going to tackle the other flower. Just adding in a few squiggles and dots for the center, taking out the water from my brush, and joining those two areas where I just laid the pigment down. So I'm going to do the same thing on this flower that I did on the first one. I'm going to take the brush, start at the center, and drag out while I'm pushing down on my brush. This is going to create the shape of the petal without me actually outlining the petal and filling it in. You can see here I'm creating most petals with uh, two strokes or so, one to two strokes. So I'll load up that brush, push and pull, and then there's a petal. Another one I just swooped out. That's a petal, one stroke. I'll create another one here with a heavier pigment load on my brush. Take out a lot of that water and pigment. And then I just swiped across the front with some water and then dropped a little bit of heavier pigment at the bottom of that to create a lighter petal across the front with a darker, heavier bottom. This will give the illusion that a petal is curling up in the front. I'm going to do some more of those lost edges here by adding water to the background and then just ever so slightly touching the wet petals. And again, adding a little deeper pigment, 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 <laughs> a little deeper pigment right at the base of some of these petals. A little of that burnt sienna in the center there. And I think that that's going to finish these main flowers. I'll probably, I am going to come in and add just a little bit more deeper burnt sienna to the centers, but I'm going to wait a bit before I do that. And I lied to you. I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> so yeah, that, those centers are still wet. So I can add that heavy pigment in. And it's going to, again, it's going to blend instead of just laying on top. Excuse me, a little hiccup there. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to do the leaves. I'm picking up some sap green. And you'll see here, I'm using the brush to make the leaf shape. Most of these I will do in one, no more than two, uh, two strokes. And then I might use the tip of my brush just to refine the shape a little bit, but for the most part, I am just taking the brush, I'm pushing down while I'm pulling, and then I'm lifting up. And that's gonna create a beautiful leaf shape with little effort. Here, I'm going to lift a little bit of that pigment out. It was a little dark, so just using a damp brush, I uh, just blotted some of that, um, that pigment off of that leaf. And again, a little bit of those lost edges there. I love this type of watercolor, and I think using your stamped images is a great way to practice this more loose, expressive painting. A lot of the times we, um, the hardest part about painting is creating the composition of the bouquet or getting the shape of the flowers just right. So if we use these stamps the same as you would use, say, a sketch, it kind of takes away that step and allows you just to focus on um, your strokes and your color. So we're going to add a couple more leaves here. You'll notice that I am varying the amount of pigment and the amount of water that I have on my brush. Sometimes I have a very dilute uh, paint on my brush, so it's much lighter. And then sometimes I'll pull straight from the pan, so it's a lot heavier. You can see here that I, I turn my paper a lot. Um, it's more comfortable for me to pull the brush towards me than it is to push it away. So you'll notice that often I turn the painting 
<clears throat> so that my brush strokes, I'm pulling them towards me. This is another reason I really love working on watercolor blocks versus um, single sheets. I don't have to do any taping down. The gummed edges holds the paper pretty taut and um, I get very minimal warping. So it just reduces one of the steps and uh, I don't have to worry about tape ripping my uh, paper. Sometimes I do like to have that nice clean white border. So I will do the taping even on the pad. I'll just tape the edges, but I'll still leave it on the block. Now this actually goes much, much faster than doing a detailed watercolor. Uh, like, I mean, you could probably tell we are uh, a good, probably three quarters of the way through this image already. And this clip I want to say was 18 minutes long and that included, you know, the stamping. Uh, so the stamping all the way to the finished painting was only 18 minutes and I'm doing this. This is, playing back real time. So yeah, this is this is actually going to be a super quick card uh, in total, less than half an hour, and that's from start to finish, including uh, the painting and the drawing. You'll see that I'm not taking uh, any extra care to wait for adjacent areas to dry either. This allows me to get some beautiful color blends and bleeds. That's one of my favorite things about expressive and loose watercolor. You see all that yellow bleeding into those pink leaves. Oh, that's one of my favorite, favorite parts of watercolor. And that's because I did not um, allow the center to dry before I did the petals. And I actually purposely touched the center area when I was painting the petals. So now we're, they've got these little, um, these little filler flowers in this cluster. I'm just going to go ahead and paint those in. And again, I'm taking even less care to properly color in these petals. I've picked up some, uh, like a pinkish purple. I started by putting a little yellow in the center. I've grabbed that purple and now I'm just making some petal shapes in a radial pattern around that center. Again, I am not, I can't be bothered to try to color in every little petal. Uh, you just need to give the suggestion of a flower and quite frankly, a blob of color with some leaves around it reads as a flower. <laughs> I'm still taking care to have heavier pigment and lighter pigment here and there. So you can see here, I think there's actually supposed to be two flowers in here if I remember correctly. Um, I don't even know if I, I, I might've made three flowers, who knows? It's not, it's really not that big of a deal. We're going for that loose, quick, expressive feel here. So I love this because you can take your own creative liberties with it. We're just using that stamp as a guide. So we've got one last little cluster of flowers up here at the top. I'll put in the center and then I will just start adding a little bit of purple um, again around that center. And this will give the suggestion of a purple flower. And I can't stress enough to make sure that you are varying your concentration of pigment. So what I mean by that is Sometimes I will pick up some color straight out of the pan. So it's a super heavy concentrated pigment and I will lay that down. And then I will dip my brush into the water jar and release some of that pigment so that now I have a lighter color. And then I will use that to do a little bit of painting and then I'll switch back to the heavier pigment and I'll go back and forth like that because it's, again, it's really that variation in the um, pigmentation that creates the magic of watercolor. So you can see I'm taking out a lot of the pigment, uh, a lot of the water from my brush so that it's just damp. And I'm using that damp brush now to just move around some of that pigment that I already laid down. For the final touches, 
I'm going to come in and add just a little more concentrated color for some uh, contrast. So here I'm taking that Burnt Sienna and I've pulled it directly from the palette. So I'm using it full strength and I'm just dotting that here and there in the centers of those purple flowers, which let's face it are really just blobs of color, <laughs> but they come off as a flower. Again, I'm going to do the same thing to the center of the cosmos. And then I'm going to take some of that permanent rose and I'm just going to add a few deep darks to the center areas of the cosmos. And I'm actually quite happy with the way the cosmos turned out. So I'm being a, a little more reserved with how much I'm adding to those. Uh, I'm just adding a little bit here and there to just give a little bit of contrast to some of the petals and help uh, separate them from the others. And I do apologize for the reverberation on the microphone here. I'm trying to figure out where I previously had the microphone uh, so I wouldn't get that reverb. So just bear with me. I'm, I know it, it seems better in this video than it did in the last video voiceover, but I, I'm getting there, you guys. I'll get it. I'll get it right. I promise. <laughs> so the final, final step is a little bit to the leaves. And again, you don't need much, just a little bit of contrast. So I'm just adding a shot of darker green here and there. And then in some areas, I will use that damp brush to just soften it out. And in a few spots, I will leave it quite harsh. And now that it's all finished, it's time to turn it into a card. I've trimmed it down and I'm going to grab my five by seven layers dies by W plus nine. And now I can decide exactly how I want to finish this. Do I want to make it a five by seven card? Do I want to make it smaller? So here I am just using the larger five by seven rectangle and I'm turning it and, you know, trying to decide what orientation I want it. This would be gorgeous. And I do have a sample of another one that I created in that orientation. This would also look beautiful, leaves you plenty of room for a sentiment. But ultimately, I decided to go with the four by six rectangle also included in this die set. Now, because I left the watercolor sheet a little bit larger, I can turn this whole arrangement at kind of an angle and make the bouquet kind of come up at a diagonal. I'm going to use the With Love sentiment here, also included in Flora and Fauna 3. And then I'm also going to add the sub sentiment, uh, You're in My Thoughts. I'm stamping both of these in pure color, dye ink in black, and I'm stamping directly onto the card panel here. This is watercolor paper and it does have a texture. It is cold pressed, so that's why I'm using my Misty and also the Honeybee Pressure Tool. The Misty is invaluable when stamping on a little bit rougher or textured paper because it allows you to stamp multiple times to make sure that you get a full clean impression. And I just adhered this panel to a 5x7 card base. Nice and simple. The uh, painting really is the star of the show on this card and I love the way this turned out. Okay, and then I made several versions of this card. So this is an A2 version. Here I placed the bouquet uh, horizontally and I love the way this one turned out. I also did a slimline card, another great one. This one I used the Honey Bee um, Miss You Big Time, I think is the name of this one. I'll have it linked below for uh, exactly which one this is, but I love the way this one turned out. And then I have this final one. Now this one, again, I did the bouquet uh, horizontally and I chose to use that same stamp set from Honey Bee, but I used the coordinating die on this one. I love the way these turned out and I think that it gives such a different look to the stamp set and you can be as controlled or as loose as you like, but I do highly recommend giving this technique a try. Uh, it's a great way to practice doing something a little looser uh, a little more towards the freehand watercolor, but you get the luxury of using that stamp set as a guide. So 
I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I really hope that you learned something. I want to thank you for watching. And if you did enjoy this video, please leave a comment below and don't forget to like it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.